described as the perfect storm by biodiversity. Our ability to live on the planet is being whittled away. And the question is, how are we unfolding through that? What is our transition through that? Is it meant to happen? You know, some people would have us turn it all back, try and find some new technology to, to cure global warming, for example. <laughs> If that isn't synchronicity, <laughs> what is? Who am I? What am I? Why am I here? How many times have you stopped to contemplate these questions? When you're on your way to work in the morning, how much do you notice of what's going on around you? What's going on on planet Earth right now? Why is there so much pain and suffering? What's really real in life? What's your truth? What's your highest truth? What do you really believe in? What stirs your soul? What is destiny? Is there such thing as destiny? How do I tune into my soul and really follow it? What is enlightenment? What is ascension? What is this journey that's been spoken of by the gurus and mystics for centuries? Well, this and many other questions we're going to be asking in this video. Fasten your seatbelts, Dorothy, because Kansas is going bye-bye. We're waiting here at the dawn of a miraculous new evolution. A powerful spiritual awakening is happening to people all across our planet. We're moving into a higher vibrational reality founded on unconditional love, joy, and mutual respect for all life. It's almost impossible to grasp the full magnitude of what's taking place all around us. And yet even as we speak, the vast majority are still locked in this illusion of separateness, fighting with one another, struggling to control ever dwindling natural resources. We really are standing at a crucial junction in our evolution and we have a choice to make. Either we continue to fight with one another and spiral ever further downwards, or alternatively, we go inwards, we unravel the restrictions that are binding us, find a new sense of true self, and allow lightness of being to take us upwards through the darkness into this bright new beginning.
This documentary details from direct first-hand experience how to go inwards, unravel the restrictions that bind us, and access this higher paradigm, a heaven that exists here and now, all around us. It takes us on a journey of discovery through the internal layers of consciousness, peeling away that which no longer serves us. It provides an invaluable route map through the key transitions of our lives, through the five expansions of consciousness leading to our enlightenment and ultimately our ascension into the higher paradigm. Welcome to our new beginning. People all across our planet are undergoing a powerful spiritual awakening. We're emerging from the darkness and into the light. It's part of an overall planetary process that we can call ascension. What is ascension? What is it all about? And how is it affecting us all? You can perhaps imagine that at the creation of the universe, light exploded in all directions like ripples on a pond flowing outwards. But just as there's energy moving outwards to greater separation, there's also a powerful undertow, just as the undertow on a pond. And that undertow is inviting us and drawing us back to a greater sense of oneness and unity with all things. And this process of letting go of identification with this sense of separation from all to going inwards and connecting with the heart and following that guided journey back to the discovery of who and what we really are, that process is called ascension. What you're seeing all around is you're seeing lots of people still identifying with the whole drama of struggling for survival, concerned deeply about global warming, poverty, famine, these kinds of things. And no one's saying we shouldn't be deeply concerned about those things that are happening on our planet. But in fact, they're also offering a mirror, a mirror to see ourselves better and ask, who are we really? How are we feeling? What are we being in response to those things that are happening? And when we start going inside, and looking at who we are in response to all of that. It's then that we start to unravel the attachments, the distortions that have built up over countless lifetimes. And when we start doing that, we're taken through five key expansions of consciousness. Some know them as initiations. Initiations because some of these transitions of consciousness, our spirit, are very powerful indeed. Powerful to rock the very foundations of what we believe to be reality. We create our world, our experience, and everything in the outer movie, if you like, of our lives by what we're being within. And as we start to transition these various expansions, we start changing and shaping the outer reality. A gateway is like a universal marker where you know that your perception has radically changed and life will never be the same again.
We live in a society that seems perfectly configured to take us out of the experience of the true self. What am I looking for now? Everything feels backward. Constant distraction, noise, the media, newspapers, TV, radio, traffic, our careers, our friends, family, creating constant distraction which pull us out of the experience within and engage us in the drama outside. And what happens is that the soul, our spirit, gets fragmented into conditioned behaviors and fixed thought forms that we take on from our society. And the soul gets dissipated into these fragmented behavior patterns. And we may live for many lifetimes in this way, constantly lost, constantly seeking something in the external drama, but never finding that illusionary goal which will give us a sense of fulfillment and joy inside. I feel like everything I know is wrong. I feel like everything I know is wrong. I feel like everything I know is wrong. I just knew something wasn't right. I was really depressed. I asked the question, who am I? What am I doing here? I was probably about 14 and I was with friends in a shopping centre and I just had this moment of realisation, I just looked around it and I just had this real sense that this wasn't real and that there was something much further beyond that. And then one day, after many years and lifetimes of struggling and efforting, we might just surrender and give up. It might be sitting by a tree in nature one day when we see the sun coming down through the leaves and all of a sudden we feel something different. An interconnectedness with all things. You don't just see Mother Nature through the tired memories of our childhood. Instead, we actually feel the consciousness all around us. It becomes a part of what we are. And those experiences are typified frequently by a feeling of expansion, timelessness, awesome stillness, peace, maybe joy, a sense of at one with all things. I could feel things that I'd never felt before. I saw an animal and I felt like I was that animal. I'd woken up and everywhere I looked, I felt like I was in this cosmic mirror and everything was reflecting something back. There's this kind of complete relaxation and peacefulness as a constant background and feelings of joy just arise spontaneously and frequently from the tiniest thing. It might be, you know, the beauty of a flower or a bird landing on the windowsill. You notice the radiance of life, and in noticing that radiance of life, how could you possibly do anything to desecrate it? And when we can continually feel this sense of at one moment and joy, then it's a sure sign that we're stepping through that first gateway of expanded consciousness. And at that point, it's where we, we're becoming more the observer of life. We're kind of looking down on it. We're watching ourselves in our daily interactions with people, in our work, in our relationships in everything that we do and suddenly we realize we're not in the drama anymore but we're up above it looking through the drama we've been released from it we are liberated that's when we're really stepping through that gateway and it 
may well be marked by quite a powerful experience. It could be something miraculous that we notice. For example, some amazing synchronicity that guides us to a particular place or time. And we're being spoken to through the weave of, of life. And that really says something to us. It speaks to the very core of our being. Or it may be simple things, sitting on a park bench, just enjoying and tasting life in a way that we've never done before. It's when these things are happening to us that we can be pretty sure we've stepped through that first gateway. So what might we do to facilitate our spiritual awakening? Is there anything we can do to catalyze it? The key is to become the observer of ourselves in all of our interactions, in all of the things that we do. In our interactions with friends and family, the food that we eat, the clothes that we wear. When we're driving a car and someone is tailgating us, for example, how is that making us feel inside? So we can realize we are not the sum total of our thoughts, feelings, our beliefs. We are not that, but we are that presence which is watching all of that. And if we can extract ourselves and surrender into that heavenly place, then our awakening is likely to happen. I had what I would probably call a pre-awakening and in the pre-awakening it was like I, my mind was opened to the fact that there was lots of energies interplaying in this world that I'd previously not been aware of and what followed for me was just a kind of mental exploration of all that, um, going out and reading lots of books for instance. So. My awakening happened maybe 10 years after that, when through a series of beautiful shamanic ceremonies, I was just overwhelmed by a really nurturing feeling of connection. I went through the first gateway during a car crash in which I thought I'd certainly die. When you face death, you have one of two choices. You can either go into panic and terror and fear of what that means and really close down, or as what happened to me, you can simply just completely and totally let go. I literally just collapsed on the bed and let go of everything. Everything I dreamed of, everything I loved, everything I despised, everything that meant anything to me and I felt this rush of white light bolt through my entire being and fountain out through my head and before I knew it I was just immersed in a sea it was actually an infinite sea of white light there was nothing else everything had fallen away it's like your consciousness just expands like a genie out of the bottle and that's what happened to me, and I found myself expanding into what I later came to know as multiple dimensions of reality. It was like I wasn't just seeing on this plane, but understanding what every single moment was telling me, what it was saying. And that is that every single moment in our lives has but one purpose. And that is to realize a deeper truth about ourselves. And this I was beginning to see. And it completely liberated me from the whole illusion of life because 
it gave a deeper meaning. It wasn't a question of winning or losing, of this is a good moment or that's a bad moment. It was, here is a moment to truly discover something about yourself, a blessing. And in that moment, I could see that for the first time in my life. I felt unity consciousness for the first time. I felt connected to everything for the first time in my life. And during the crash, I felt this amazing, overwhelming presence. It was as if someone was sat on top of me with a big bucket full of unconditional love and just pouring it down, just kept pouring down this unconditional love. Now the funny thing is, I didn't know up until that point what unconditional love was. I'd not experienced in my life before, but there's a knowing when it happens, a knowing that must be intrinsic to us all, because I knew what that was. I knew it was unconditional love. And it was loving me just for me. It was loving the good, the bad, and the ugly. It was, lo it was loving everything. It was almost like the universe came and just gave me this great big hug, and suddenly I knew what it was to be connected. And so in that crash, life changed irrevocably for me. From that point on, yes, I might have got lost in the drama a bit every now and then, but that memory, that experience, that consciousness was always there then to remind me, just to let go and say, hey, come on, this is all just a game. Just, just let go and just experience unity with everything again. And so I, I, after that point, I never got lost for any real length of time again. That was my Gateway Warren experience. After my awakening experience, that's when I stepped consciously on the spiritual path. It's when we've been awakened for a period of time, we might then start to feel a pull that's taking us in a particular direction, kind of like a stream flowing down a mountain, a journey. Life is taking us on a journey of unfolding and discovery. The major gateway for me was Gateway 2. It was the one that really took all my inner resources to pass through. There was this massive realisation that I actually had an enormous choice to make. Am I going to choose that path? Am I going to choose to live rightly in every moment, no matter what the consequence? I remember in my Gateway 2 experience, that nothing mattered more to me than following the pull of my soul. And where is that flow taking us? Well, it's taking us to all the places where we get stuck. So as the stream flows down the mountainside, it might get stuck in little eddy currents where we get attached to various things in life, our relationships to people or a home or a job maybe, and it's asking us, do we really want to be free? And if we do, then we have to let go. And 
allow those distortions to dissolve away, in which case the light of the soul will begin to shine more brightly. And what's happening is we're realigning from personality or mind-led choices in life. We're surrendering that and instead going with what the heart, what we feel inside is really directing us to do. So this is called the realignment. It's going to take us into the heart of our deepest fears because we have made a declaration to the universe that we're ready to allow our soul to flow so that we can truly be at one with all things. And so how might we facilitate soul-led decision-making in life and really following the flow of the soul? Well, it begins by giving time to those things that really give us joy in life, that really make us feel light and uplifted and complete and whole. Maybe it's a favorite pastime or walking out in the countryside or playing some kind of sport or meditation or a particular practice. If you can find some space for yourself, be in nature as much as possible, take part in the things that just make your soul sing, the kinds of joy that lit you up when you were a child, then those are the things that will help you break apart all the conditioning and all the tightness that's been imposed on you. If we take the time through our daily lives to give as much time as possible to those things that give us joy, then we'll connect more with that real deep soulful feeling inside more and more. The soul gets stronger and stronger. And so attuning to those things which give us joy is the first step. And as we do that, the heart begins to open, which means that we're perceiving more and more through first the five senses. We're seeing things more brightly. Sounds are crisper, as if they're kind of inside of us when we're, when we're listening to them. We feel the vibrations. Smells are more intense and the taste, for example, of food is stronger and more beautiful. When we taste food, really taste it, notice scents, smells, fragrances around us, sounds, we feel, we feel at a depth that we never felt before. The simplest, simplest thing becomes the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in your life. And as these things begin to happen, our sixth sense kicks in, that of intuition. We begin to feel a pull. We're guided by signs and synchronicity. We're not quite sure what, why or how, but we know we have to move in a certain direction. And when we follow that flow, then what happens is it takes us into our tightness, the conditioned behaviors we get stuck in, in our lives. It could be in our careers, our relationships, or simple day-to-day -day living. We're creating an ever-changing mirror through that synchronicity, saying this is what you are being now. Does that serve you? Is there something else inside which is a greater expression of who and what you are?
And so if we can let go of our tightness, relax and hold that open space inside, then a more authentic gift of beingness will come through, an expression of the soul. Then frequently, our outer world is going to reflect that new beingness back to us through divine acts of synchronicity. I think acceptance of whatever is going on around you is really key. Because most of the time, well, all, all the time, whatever's going on around you is just there to show you something. All you're doing is looking for the message in what's going on. You don't need it to be a certain way anymore. It's a completely different way of being. What I've noticed is that there's a fear that people have about being who they truly are and walking the path. Where is that path going to take them? What impact is it going to have on other people? How are we going to pay the bills if we leave a job? If you can make that breakthrough to a point where you'll say, I will surrender and give up all expectations of what's going to happen next and just take what comes, I accept it. If you can be in that space, it means you're ready to go through Gateway 2, even though you might be frightened. If you're prepared to grasp your courage in both hands and say, I will take whatever comes, then you're through the gate. So after the awakening, I went back into my traditional, typical, normal lifestyle, if you like. I was a wealthy businessman, married with two kids. But in truth, I was really depressed. Although I was trying frantically to keep my head just above the water. But at the same time, I could see how people and how I myself was not living a life that completely fulfilled me, that completely allowed my beingness to unfold itself and express itself. But I was in a job that didn't serve me. It didn't stir my soul. I was in a marriage that didn't serve me. And I remember feeling an energy welling from my soul, crying out, I am not going to do anything that doesn't serve me anymore. It was like I was being constrained and limited by the house, by gadgets, by electricity, electrosmog, by the food we ate, by the clothes we wore. All of these things were having a lowering, compressing effect on my vibration. And so I asked the universe, show me. Show me how to walk my true path in life. I, c I couldn't live in both worlds anymore. I just had to, to fully move into the lightness. So I just had to move to that place of being free to be me being free to be me in every moment. And I was taken to Cornwall in southern England to meditate for a week on the cliffs overlooking the ocean. And I had this intention and I found myself tightening and constricting again. And then something happened. I let go again. I realized what this is really all about that it's really about your joy and following that, which really makes your soul sing. So instead of having this intention, I just started following the pool. It was magic just to watch and then just to, as you're watching, 
really just dissolve into the feeling of what you're seeing and experiencing. And this was really making my soul then speak and radiate outwards. And so I realized that simple things in nature were beginning to speak to me. You could look up into the clouds and see a cloud formation. And if you just opened and asked, what does that mean? Show me. It actually feels something inside. You might not actually get it intellectually, and that's okay. But the key is, what are you feeling inside? Is it helping you open up and let go? And so my meditation became a living, breathing, walking, moving, spiritual act. And that really helped me unfold. It was a challenging experience to leave my marriage, especially when I had a, a baby. But I felt such unrest and such lack of peace, and I didn't know what I was going to do. It was when I committed, when I made the commitment to leaving, everything started to fall into place. Miracles happen. I found the right house. That was definitely a realignment experience. And so when I'd done that, when I'd taken that courage and when I'd leapt off the cliff, there was a complete feeling of liberation and a feeling that actually this was the beginning of my life. This was the time when I was really going to find out who I am. Just being me. I felt joy. I felt like the world was mine and I could do anything. There was nothing that if I followed my soul, that wasn't possible. And then something profound happened. I'd asked this question, how can I follow my truth all the time? Not just every now and then, not just when it suited me. How could I follow my highest truth the whole time? And as I completed my final meditation on the last day, this incredible bird, this kestrel, rose up the cliff and it hung in the air just before me, only a few feet away, maybe six or seven, eight feet away. And I suddenly knew this message was meant for me. And there was this instant connection, so strong that it brought tears to my eyes. And what did I notice? I noticed that its head was perfectly still and yet that its body angled under the wind coming off the ocean, subtly adjusting its feathers and its wings and its body to hold its head perfectly still. And then just at the right moment, it dropped out of the sky like a bullet, straight down on its target below. And I knew this was my message. And it was this, if we can be still in life, if we can observe and watch the drama, but not just the drama, watching ourselves in it. If we can do that and not be sucked in, then what happens is the heart opens. And as the heart opens, we feel through the six senses, the flow, the natural flow of the universe more strongly through our being. And as we feel that, it's like every moment invites right action. Then we have a choice. Are we going to follow right action or not? This is the moment then to express our highest truth. And if we hold that open space, then spontaneously truth will arise. That was my understanding of how to walk the path. And I made a commitment on that day that I would always hold that open space to feel what was right in the moment. My advice to someone who's feeling pulled to begin walking the path would be to take that next step, to find the courage and to keep walking.
For me, going through Gateway 3, the next big shift was probably the most cataclysmic shift to date. <laughs> the transfiguration is another powerful transition on our spiritual journey, perhaps even the most powerful of them all. Prior to it, we've been identifying with our inner child and our inner teenager identities, a false self which has been built up through the conditioning of our lives, our background, our parents, our friends, and society in general. And we've been acting through that filter, that false self. We're in the transfiguration and in the build up to it, these conditioned neural pathways in the brain start to shatter. And as they do so, the, the seer arises out of the false self, just like a phoenix from the ashes. We're now riding the soul like a wave through the outer experiences of our lives. I'd felt a pull to begin to meditate. I lay down on the floor and let go. Then I began to feel myself melting, falling away. And then I felt a bolt of lightning <laughs> shoot through my base chakra, all the way up through the chakras and out the crown of my head. And I felt that bolt of lightning seven times. <laughs> I was, for a couple of days, feeling really resistant to going on a retreat. I became overcome with a paralysis and a complete numbness from head to foot and couldn't move. And I just went right into the experience, right into the centre of it, straight in and through. And as I went into this just really dark place and carried on through the darkness, suddenly it unfolded into a completely different experience. I was part of a vast ocean. There was no me anymore. I was just completely part of it. Merged with it, one with it. And it was just beautiful. Everything was just perfect bliss. It was a colossal surge of universal life energy. I didn't understand that at the time. I didn't know what it was. This energy brought me to the transfiguration. So how might we facilitate the transfiguration? World is gone insane. My head rings with pain. How do I attain steady peace of mind? Kind of hard to find. What tools can we use and apply in our daily lives? The key thing that we must do is raise our energetic vibration. And we do that by relinquishing the old patterns of our previous life. So we'll confront many things. We'll confront our dietary habits, for example, the relationships that we might have, those key points that drag us back into the old sense of consciousness, the old identification. Wow. It's about purification, inner purification. The purification wasn't just about releasing attachments, it was about the activities I took part in, what I ate, the clothes that I wore. I changed my lifestyle. I was moved to eat a compassionate diet. I wear more natural clothing. Um, I couldn't engage in chit chat unless it stirred my soul, I wasn't interested in it anymore. What I would read, what I would watch, everything. Everything was part of a cleansing 
deciding what to keep in my life and what to actually let go of. And that included people as well, you know, deciding how to actually spend my time. It might also be that we wish to get engaged in particular spiritual practices, be it some meditative art or some body work, something that really gets us to go deep within ourselves and question the motivations for our actions in daily life. When we do that, we're connecting more and more and more with the soul. It's reintegrating inside us. And there will come this point then when the balance shifts from the personality to the soul and the seer arises from within that dynamic. The seer is my state of absolute, pure, non-identified presence. It's a state beyond all things, yet through it all, it's everything and nothing at the same time. So following my realignment, I found myself on another journey. It was a journey of inner purification and I was also caused to confront what I've come to know since as the inner child and the inner teenager identity. And it was kind of like a roller coaster ride. One minute you were really down in the depths of all of this density and darkness that you'd known before and unraveling all the, all the rubbish. The next minute you'd go through that and you'd be riding high on some wave. And I followed this path for many months. And bit by bit by bit, I found my soul reintegrating inside, getting stronger, flowing through me stronger and stronger and stronger, such that its call, its voice within, I couldn't deny it anymore. I just had to listen to it. And then one day, it led me up onto a, a hilltop overlooking the farm where I worked. And this huge movement of energy inside happened, flowing from a base all the way up through my spine. And it's, it's like the whole of the top of my head just lifted off and this energy just flowed straight through me and out of the top like some fountain joining with the cosmos above. And it wasn't until later that I discovered I'd had a full-blown Kundalini awakening. And with my Kundalini awakening came this amazing experience of what I can only describe as pure, non-identified presence. Crystal clear clarity that seemed to pervade everything. It was as though I'd become everything, nothing all at once. Amazing experience. And I remember walking around thinking, what's this? I'm moving a body, how, how am I doing that? It's like I'd just been reborn again. And, you know, my frame of reference for everything had completely shattered. I didn't know how to deal with that amount of energy. And so I ended up leaping out of bed and just running around the house. and. and, and I was dancing madly downstairs, upstairs, in all the rooms and, and I was just singing this one line of a song that was going round and round and round and the one line was, I'm so free, I'm so free, I'm so free, I'm so free. A kind of just a crazy madness, just beautiful. And what I also found was that from this 
place of pure presence, then action just wanted to happen. It was like energy was just flowing through me. And at any one moment, I could feel what I was supposed to be being, whether it was sad, happy, purposeful, surrendered and relaxed. It was as though all of these things were just arising of their own accord in relation to what was happening around. The child like me is still very present because that's an innate, natural, innocent joy and it's more able to be unleashed because it's not inhibited. I am now so fully my true self that I can interact with society again and not be lost in it. Because between Gateway 2 and Gateway 3, it's just there sucking you back. But now, it can never suck me back. I'm ready for it. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> the trouble was that people on the outside, the outside world couldn't now relate to who and what I was now being. They, they'd known me a certain way, that expected me to be a certain way. But I couldn't conform to that anymore. That just wasn't real for me, it just didn't exist. And so for a while, there was this sense of dislocation from everything, from society, from people. But instead of identifying with it, I just let myself go into it and expand into it and keep looking for that new aspect of beingness, that new energy which wants to come through and aligning with that. And that was my experience of being transfigured. After I'd gone through Gateway 3, I felt like I really would like to have a break. I'd like just to have a nice peaceful life. I was committed with every cell of my being to walking the path and I began to have my first experiences of dealing with karma. As we've transitioned gateway three, the false self has been completely obliterated and we as the seer have stepped out of the ashes. Now we are the non-identified awareness of all things. We've transcended the space between the spaces. And that experience is so profound, it's so amazing that often a shadow might creep up while we're in that state and start to question what we're really experiencing. enlightened state now, but we're not quite comfortable with it. A fragment of soul is still identifying with the drama somehow. Alternatively, the experience may be so beautiful, so profound, that we wish to own that, and so a shadow identity may form around that experience. It's kind of like an echo of the nothing everythingness that we're feeling. And to truly deal with that experience, to dissolve away the shadows, we must go deep into our past, into our karma, because it's 
our karma that creates these shadow identities from our past life experiences. The kind of thing that might have happened in a past lifetime that causes us to get attached tend to be something quite traumatic, something that we struggle to come to terms with. Typically it might be um, the way we've been killed, a great loss, we may have lost loved ones in quite traumatic situations and things like that. And we tend to bring that with us unless we're able to be awesomely okay with that. We tend to bring that into the next lifetime and recreate that in a different way so that it gives us the opportunity to go into the heart of that and release ourselves from that attachment. The only way out is through. Well, it's this point that we really must surrender and trust in divine guidance because if we do divine guidance will take us on a journey kind of like a labyrinth we're taken through a maze where we confront twists and turns in our lives it's in these places where the shadow is arising and we must confront that i had no previous knowledge of karma it was a very very testing time and my understanding of the five gateways really helped me get through it. I was revisited by every insecurity I'd ever had in my life. And they all just came raining down on me all at once, and new ones as well. And it played out between me and people close to me. So basically an opportunity was being offered to let go of whatever had hurt me or harmed me in the past. To get to that point, I had to feel it again. So the overwhelming feeling at the time for me was just complete, utter and total abandonment. Just abjectly alone forever is how it felt. It sounds really challenging, and it is really challenging, but the liberation that we experience is truly profound. It's more profound than anything we can experience before that. And so we might be taken through many incidents like that to dissolve this karma, which is why people call this transition the crucifixion, till ultimately, the soul is completely reintegrated within us and we are the seer of all things, riding the soul like a wave. We are centered in our truth. We are now completely enlightened. So what are the tools that might help us through Gateway 4? Well, the first one is self-vigilance. That means to watch what we're feeling inside and watch our motivations for action. Are we behaving completely authentically or is there still some hidden desire for an outcome in this drama? And if we keep watching ourselves with profound self-honesty, then we may also then trust in divine guidance that we'll be shown the way. And if we do that, we'll get caught out, we'll get caught in surprises where we're kind of blundering into obstacles and wondering why life has taken the twists and turns that it has. It's almost like the universe is having a great cosmic joke at our expense. And it's at this point that we reconfront our karma. So we might be looking for essences of past life experiences. Maybe we don't quite know why we're feeling the things we're feeling, but they are coming up. And it's recognizing those feelings honoring them, really attuning to them, not trying to avoid them or sweep them under the carpet somehow, but letting them wash through us fully and becoming awesomely okay in that. The key to processing karma is to go right into the center of whatever we feel, explore it with every cell of our being, 
And when we do that, we find it falls away. It dissolves. And in that situation, looking for a key, just something to unlock the door, just to remind us that this is really all just an illusion and we can release ourselves from the drama. For me it was openness, just that word openness helped me let go as I was really suffering. And then finally we'll know when the, the fourth gateway has been completed because there'll be a sense of having accomplished something and we settle into an awesome state of okayness. With the Gateway 4, what I found now was that I was getting deeper and deeper involved in spiritual work. If you look in the patterning of the two jobs, if you look at what went on, it took me a long time to realize that there was a little fragment of my soul which was beginning to own that experience, that wanted it to be, that was pleased, if you like, at the progress I was making, that wanted an outcome. And I couldn't quite see that because, as far as I was concerned, everything I was doing was now selfless. It's like wearing a pair of sunglasses with a filter in. And because it's been put in gradually, suddenly everything you're looking through looks normal to you now, like it should be but you can't see that little bit of energy. So when you're expressing with people, you're not being fully authentic and they at some level can feel it. And this was happening to me. This shadow was owning that experience. And at some level, I could still feel that. I could feel a slight constriction, a slight tightening, but it was easy just to push it to one side because I was having success at what I was doing. But I'd made this commitment that I would always follow my soul. And I knew above all else that the only thing that made sense in life was to tune inside and feel the way forwards. Too much intellectual processing can cut you off from your feelings. And really this process is about getting more and more sensitive and more and more into your feelings and that's the best way to progress. And so eventually it took me out into the desert to a whole bunch of experiences that really exposed for me the fact that there was a little part of me that was wanting and owning that selfless service. And I came to understand that it was just because of my karma, that in a past life, I was a spiritual teacher and had been really successful and had owned that success. And that was the karma I brought forward into this life. And so I was caused to confront it again, the sense of needing to achieve something. When we go right into the heart of our karma, we find the eye of the storm. We find a serenity and a peace. And we see that we, we're not that. We are not those experiences. They, those experiences have simply been there to show us who we truly are. And as I could see that through this very powerful sequence of experiences, it left me in the desert in the baking sun with no water, thinking I was going to die yet again. Once more, there was this release and this letting go and a realization that this little fragment had been holding me and I could see my past life clearly and I could let it go in that moment. I could allow the karma to just wash through me, to be in it, to bathe in it, to soak it in, not need it to go away and then find the key that would unlock the door through it. And for me, that was a word. 
And the word was simply openness. And as the word came, I just let go and found myself once more just expanding to pure presence. Something had irrevocably changed. I'd stepped through the fourth gateway. The primary vehicle of expression in this plane is the physical body. It's the ultimate expression of form. It's very common that we get lost within that form. We think we are that form. The final gateway is called the resurrection, the fifth gateway. What is this all about? What am I looking for now? Everything feels well, in our earlier part of our journey, as we've been identified and kind of lost within this external drama, then the full complement of human skills have really closed down. We don't just have one body of expression, we actually have seven. And they range from various essences of consciousness, from physical through to energetic and etheric spirit light body for example and many of these have closed down as we become so identified with the physical body well in the fifth gateway the soul is allowed to flow freely and the soul will now finally enter all seven bodily vehicles of expression it will cleanse them it will purify them reactivate and re-energize them so what happens is we start to acquire new skills, new skills of sensitivity. Our psychic skills become stronger and stronger and stronger. We sense much more of the surrounding environment. We read synchronicities much more strongly. We get to see that there's a, this natural flow. We become part of that natural flow. It's happening all around us. There's no separation of our action and the coordinates activities of the universe. There's one symphony, one beautiful orchestra happening, and we are in the center of that. As I let go of anything that doesn't serve me, a magical path forms in front of me. That's far more magical than anything I could create with my mind. I'm creating in harmony with the universe and everything that forms around me is divine. So in this transition, gradually over time, we are dealing with the final fragments of conditioned behaviors. We're no longer lost in them but we will reactivate them. So for example, if we've had attachments in the past in relationships, it may well be that our beingness manifests a partner that's very close in our vibration, which brings out those distortions in us. And here really is where profound self-honesty is required in those relationships to own up to our own energetic issues and to go deep within those and dissolve them 
So we're behaving all the time more and more authentically. We're owning our own creative process. We're blaming nothing outside of ourselves. We are absolute creators and therefore masters of our experience. This is the Gateway 5 transition. There's absolutely no need whatsoever to intend anything at all, to manifest or create something, because we are that creation. All we have to do is be authentic, be true to our authentic beingness, and we'll find that the world shapes around us. This is what defines the resurrection. So how might we facilitate our resurrection? It's likely that we'll be taken into everyday circumstances to experience this and sharing with our friends, family, partner maybe. And the key here is to recognize where the fragments of distorted behaviors might creep back in. The key is to place your awareness in it and to open and relax will allow those distortions, those final fragments to dissolve away. A large part of the Gateway 5 process seems to be about going back through all the things you've already done, like revisiting every aspect of your beingness. So it's kind of like weeding a garden. You might go through and pull up all the big obvious weeds, but once they've gone, you can see the little tiny weeds and you can go through again, taking out things to a finer and finer level. At this stage, it's likely that we'll become much, much more aware of an unfolding divine plan and our part within it. And the key is to really surrender into that, that role, surrender into that plan and recognize our, our role as light workers and be a positive force for change. It's our purpose here to bring in light, to help others to see the light within themselves and really magnify that and glorify that for everyone else, in which case we raise our collective vibration. When we're in Gateway 5, the purpose is to allow our authentic beingness to infuse into this world so that others may see that inside of themselves. And if we do, we'll find that a whole array of different talents, of different gifts unfold naturally as aspects of our soul which is now fully liberated and has these wonderful vehicles of expression through which to speak and act. So these are really the tools to, to help us facilitate the final gateway. We become at one with the divine plan to the point where we realize that we are the divine plan. For me, the fifth gateway, it was like I'd begun the enlightenment process all over again because it took me back into relationship. I'd come out of relationship much earlier in my journey and felt that this was it, that I'd always be on my own, a, a monk, a celibate monk, and I was really happy to be in that space, have my own life, my own way of living, but it just wasn't to be. You know, whatever, whatever we may hold as some kind of intention, I've come to realize the universe will just blow apart. And so I was taken right back into relationship and I met this beautiful person I came to know as my soulmate. But you know, the interesting thing about a soulmate, it's not like you waltz off into some 
beautiful sunset and everything is happy ever after together. That's not what being with a soulmate is all about. What happens is you're looking into a mirror and you're looking into the mirror the whole time and nothing gets through that mirror without you seeing yourself and seeing where you get tight or your field closes down in some way because of old patterns, still fragments, just remnants of old patterns and energy that's in your field. Maybe because you were selfish in relationship, for example. I want to get relaxed. You're not getting engaged in the drama, are you? You sure? The outcome doesn't matter. And if we go back... So I found myself confronting all of this tightness and what was happening was all the while I was expanding and opening new channels of, of beingness and action and multi-dimensionality. So it was like you could read continually the deeper meaning behind all events and circumstances, especially those events and circumstances that made you get tight. It wasn't like some you know, magical wonderland. It was continually confronting the tightness, like hammering a nail into the wall and banging your thumb or trying to put wallpaper up or digging the garden. Do you get tight around those things or not? And, and they all spoke. They all had a deeper meaning. And you could feel all the time this natural flow <laughs> in and through those events. So when you come to a place like this, a beautiful place, an expansive place, it's now like everything is speaking to you. The birds, the insects, the trees, the rocks, they come alive. And you are at one with that. And you're feeling that the whole time. Your undeniable place within it. It's like living your life surrounded by miracles the whole time. It's like when you were little and the world felt magical and then somehow that all faded away. And now it's like that's reclaimed when every little nuance of, of life speaks to you. Every petal, every flower, every bird, every cloud, anything that can carry a message. When that's speaking to you all the time, life is truly magical all the time. So now we're being fully multidimensional. We're connecting and communicating with life on multiple planes of existence. The full complement of the seven bodily vehicles of expression are now open and activating and, and working positively for you. That's the full-blown fifth gateway experience. And now, we are liberated, we are free to continue our path onwards and forwards into, into higher realms. But it may be that we choose to stay, or we're given to stay, it's our destiny to stay, to help others on their journey of unfolding. And for me, that's what's happened until it's my time to move on. So now we're acting through multiple planes of reality. Now we're really being a positive force for change.
They say that it's always darkest just before the dawn. We really are waiting at the crossroads of a new evolution for mankind. Many are still stuck in this reality, in the old world, the old values, the old existence that just doesn't really serve us anymore. And the others who are going inwards and saying, there must be something more than this. And I can tap into that when I really peel away that, that which doesn't serve me and access my true human beingness. We each have gifts that we probably never dreamed of. And if we step through these five gateways that we've outlined in this film, then we really can access this new heaven all around us here and now. I used to think that enlightenment and ascension were just for the occasional spiritual master that passed through every now and again. But what I now realise, it's actually the natural spiritual progression for all of us. Five Gateways is perhaps mankind's greatest untold story. You can see it, of course, in the life of Jesus, but not just Jesus. You can see it in the lives of other spiritual masters too. The Buddha, for example. Now the time has come to dust off the pages of history, to open our minds and open our hearts and look at the story from a fresh perspective. It's time we reclaimed our divine birthright, the gift that can help us all walk the spiritual path. That to me is the message of the five gateways. So as you walk the path, each learning is really integrated into your being. Understanding is just drop into place. Concepts actually become knowings. There's something inside of me that clicked and it feels like I don't have to sort of struggle and effort to be on the path because by just surrendering and relaxing and you know trusting in what's happening, it feels like I am on the path. Stuff's gonna happen and I'll just have to deal with that, That'll, that's okay. For me, the crucifixion was a powerful and passionate event. I believe it serves as a metaphor to us all. It doesn't matter whether you're a spiritual teacher, a housewife, a bus driver, a company CEO. We all must experience this death of the ego in order to also taste this incredible liberation which is, which is beyond words. It's not about trying to manifest our reality. It's having the courage to accept it as it really is and to walk that true path. It's about surrendering to the truth of the moment and really expressing that. Then we come into full alignment with the universe. You know, we create our reality by what we're being within. It's like with a cinema projector, creating the outer movie of our lives by our inner configuration of consciousness. Now, when people discover this, there's often the temptation to try to manifest or control the outer reality by controlling the inner one. This is ultimately self-defeating. After all, we are who we are. The real secret to unfolding our destiny is simply to remove all the internal obstacles to it. Coming from the place of mind-led intention rather than the soul, it's created a, a world of chaos, a world of conflict. It's created pain and suffering.
You know, we're not living in one world, but two. The lower world is based on a system of inequity and injustice. It's a world of have and have not, of rich and poor, of profit and loss, of winner and loser. It's an outdated system long past its sell-by date. And yet there's another world, a truly beautiful world of interconnectivity with all. It's where all life is cherished and respected. It's where we receive with one hand and with the other we give in equal measure. It's about spiritual enrichment and continued human evolution. Now these two worlds are beginning to separate. The energy is moving from the old world and into the new. And as that energy moves, the old systems, the old structures are fracturing and breaking apart. It's that sense of freedom and liberation which is being released from that. And as that energy moves into the higher paradigm, we're going to see those old systems crumbling and cracking all around us. You know, one world has a future and the other does not. I feel like I interact with the third dimension, the kind of construct that is our perceived way of being these days. But I'm not of it anymore. I'm no longer part of that. I feel much more aligned with the fifth dimension. I know I'm ascending. That is my reality. Poets, authors, painters, they've all tried to capture this, but can never really justify that amazing sense of completeness and fulfillment within. There's something here in this feeling that um, this is what I've been searching for. I don't now feel alienated. I feel like there are people out there who are experiencing it and lots of people are experiencing this. It is an awakening. It is like being unplugged from the matrix. It is a new knowledge. I've come home. I can identify with people. I don't feel like a freak anymore. I found it. Now I'm definitely walking my own path. I'm going in. The term ascension means to me the promised land. It's glimpsing and moving to the promised land. It feels like, you know, I've just gone through a big shift of energy and I'm sort of discovering what ascension means in every sort of moment. You know, it's one thing to hear about it, but I mean, it's, a, it's a completely different thing to experience it for yourself. I just have to keep discovering. Ascension means going home. To me, ascension is moving my centre of consciousness from the third dimension to the fifth dimension. And I feel like there are lots of people who are responding to the call within their soul. Many people are beginning to look around them and look at this circus that we're living in and ask, does it really serve us? Is it what we really want? Do we want to continue in that? Or can we go inwards? Can we peel away these veils of illusion that restrict and bind us? Can we connect with our soul, find out what it really means to be human again, and become the magical beings that we always were meant to be? It's a destined way of living that is here and now open to us all. Are you ready to make that choice? Are you ready to step from the old reality and into the new? The choice is entirely up to you.
There is no better way to be alive. I wouldn't give this up for anything. It's just moments of utter joy and perfection and happiness and wonder and awe and, you know, you live your life with the icing on the cake. <laughs>